Okay, break time's over. I'm gonna head back into Twin Lakes and I'm hoping that I can hitch a ride. I've made a fancy sign. Looks like this. We'll see if it helps. <laughs> Flashed that sign and the first car that saw it stopped and took me to town. <laughs> I might sell my car hitchhiking so easy. Just finished my lunch. I don't have a sign now, so we'll see if I can get a hitch. I'm just gonna try to go to the dam, which is about, I think it's about three and a half miles. I don't know if you can see the Twin Lakes. This is lake number one. You can see they come to a close in the middle. I need to go all the way to the end of lake number two. And guess what? I think I've probably already walked a mile and no one's picking me up. Hey guys, this is OP from Norway. Hi. <laughs> I was getting worried, man. Nobody was picking me up. I didn't have a sign and he's foreign and he doesn't know any better, so he picked me up. <laughs> Thanks again, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, back on trail. It's two o'clock. My plan was tomorrow morning to do a 20 mile day and then three more 18 something mile days with lots of climbing before my next resupply, but I'd like to get ahead of that and maybe, maybe allow myself not to have to push so hard. Take, a, take some time to stop and smell the roses a little bit more, you know? Let's go get in the forest. <laughs> It's beautiful back here, isn't it? These aspen groves are amazing. It just puts a big smile on my face. Can't, can't help it. <laughs> oh, so cool. Hey guys, check it out. I got some magic. I told you it would happen sooner or later. I'm Rob. Hi, I'm Sue, otherwise known as Snickers. And Alicia, happy baby. <laughs> so they just finished hiking the trail and they set up here to uh, give hot dogs and beer to weary hikers. And look who just happened to walk by. <laughs> I lucked out once again. Anyway, thanks guys, I really appreciate it. Yes. Wasn't that cool? Totally wasn't expecting that. No way I'm saying no to a cold beer, that's for sure. In fact, <laughs> I got a roadie to go tucked in my pack, so when I get to camp tonight, I can have one more. I deserve it. <laughs> oh, and the best part is, guess where they're from? They're from Mesa, Arizona, and I'm from Gilbert, so we're neighbors. The hiking community is full of really cool people, so. You hear the squeak in the pack? I'm gonna have to fix that tonight. The squeak is trying to come back, and it's because I'm loaded with five days of food. Boy, that was fun to sit down and chat with such nice people. I hear the little guys, but I don't see them. Maybe if I get away, mom will come back. Yep, probably mom right there. In the circle. I see you, mama. Yep, that is mama.
as we crossed the river, we started climbing and generally speaking, when it's steep, you're not gonna find a spot. So I'm gonna have to keep my eyes peeled and find, wait a minute. That might work. That looks like a flat spot. It almost looks like somebody's been there. It looks kind of clear. I like to look around for dead trees just to see if the wind picks up. There's a dead one right there. But I'm gonna be behind this big one, so this sucker is healthy. All right, home sweet home. That is day 13, done. It's a half day. I thought I would only go maybe five or six miles, but I ended up doing 10. I still got cheeseburger in my belly and a couple of beers from the Trail Magic. So I'm just gonna finish setting up and call it a night. Oh man, the mosquitoes. They're literally on the camera. All right, good night everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, friends and family. Today is day 14 on the Colorado Trail. And at some point in time today, I'm gonna to hit the 200 mile mark towards the end of the day. We've got 61 miles to get to an RV park called the Monarch RV Park, where I mailed a resupply box. So that's only like 15 miles a day at this point, thanks to my 10 mile head start I got yesterday. So it's cool, man. We don't have to really work too hard. I can just take my time. Although <laughs> every day is a lot of climbing today. There's gonna be, I think somewhere around 43 or 4,400 feet of climbing. I don't have to go 20 miles today. I only need to go about 15 miles. So anything I do over 15 miles just gets me into that RV park a little sooner. Who knows? Maybe I can get a shower there or uh, laundry or something. All right, let's go.
little over 18 miles today and just about 4,700 feet of elevation gain. And it was hard. I mean, I think I was up near 11,500 feet or somewhere around there, maybe a little higher. And I got to tell you, like climbing at those altitudes is, man, it is, it is difficult. So tomorrow I've got another big day. I can see that there's a big climb right out of the gates. So it's three and a half miles and I think it goes up 2,500 feet. I don't know, man. It's been awesome though. So and good night. Good morning, friends and family. Today is day 15. It's 7 a.m. Got kind of a late start. I slept in like a half hour. Not sure why, but I guess I needed it. Anyway. All right, let's see what happens. Here we go. I need a nap. This is brutal. With all these trees around, I can't believe I can't breathe. Where's the oxygen going? Look who's sitting here, guys. It's Kinsey. <laughs> She's at the top of this thing waiting for me, dragging my s up that hill. It took me forever. It's so hard. But I got a friend here, so that's great. We're gonna drop our stuff, and there's a hill here where we where we feel like we're so close to a beautiful view, we might as well climb to the top. So after I catch my breath, we're gonna see what we can see up there. <laughs> That peak right there is Mount Princeton. And this peak right here is Mount Yale. And me and Kinsey have decided this hill that we went up, we're calling it Mount Community College. <laughs> Just a quick little update. I'm about, I'd say two and a half miles from the road where the road walk begins. I'm gonna try to get into the Mount Princeton Resort and get a meal. I got a restaurant and I've read some notes that they'll feed hikers. So despite the fact that we're dirty and stinky and that place looks fancy, I don't know. This has been a very hard day, lots of climbing. There's no rest for the weary. All right, let's go. I lost the trail, so now I'm just gonna bushwhack until I find it. Aha! Yummy. 
man, did I luck out. I've been walking along a road for miles now and the Princeton uh, Resort is right off the highway. So I walked into Mary's Steakhouse in a pretty fancy place. And they were, they're kind of expecting hikers to come in, so it wasn't that big of a deal, but man, I had no idea I was gonna have a, a Wagyu burger and a couple of beers today. What sweet relief that was. Hey guys. What's up, guys? Well, that brings an end to day 15. Who knows what the trail has in store for us tomorrow. Morning. <laughs> oh man, it's about six o'clock. I'm uh, just making my coffee and my breakfast and I'm not in a big rush because we're not going very far today. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my sweet time. Good morning, friends and family. Today is day 16. This is officially the longest I've been away from my wife in the 30 plus years we've been together, which is very weird. <laughs> I'm only about 21 miles from the turnoff to this uh, Monarch RV park where I've mailed a resupply box. Hopefully I get some laundry done there, maybe take a shower. And if possible, maybe I'll just camp there, hang out all day. If you're wondering what my nightly routine is, this is it. First thing I do is I set up my tent. And once I get my tent set up, I put everything inside my tent. Then I grab my recovery shoes, which are Ofos, incredibly comfortable, especially after a long, grueling hike. Your feet are aching, your heels hurt, your knees hurt, your hips hurt. I put on these recovery sandals because they are incredibly comfortable. They're very squishy and oh, they feel so good. But first things first, I need to wash my nasty feet and my dirty legs. Once my feet are clean and dry, I put on a clean pair of socks. These are darn tough socks. These are actually my sleeping socks. I wear them to bed and they stay clean that way, but they do act as a backup pair of hiking socks if uh, I should tear some holes in the uh, pairs that I have with me. Once that's done, I'll head back to camp and that's when I cook dinner. I absolutely love having a hot meal at the end of a long day. 
I'll never understand the hikers that like to cold soak. I mean, cold soak? Couscous? People cold soak couscous for dinner. What kind of weird torture is that? I want a hot meal and, uh, and I, I ensure that I have a hot meal every night. And man, it's one of the favorite parts of my day. <laughs> And once dinner's done, I clean up my mess and I, it's time to crawl into my tent where I change into my sleeping clothes, which is basically a base layer of a wool top and wool long johns. And I'll eat any remaining snacks that I can eat. If I still have an appetite, I'm really trying to get it all in. Um, I'm, I'm super calorie deficient at the moment. So I'll try to eat all the snacks I can and I'll drink as much as I can to try to rehydrate. And, uh, Sooner or later, the bladder's full. <laughs> Once the bladder's full, I will head out and, and this is a perfect time to brush my teeth and take care of hygiene. And this is when I tie my ursac to a tree. All of my food goes into anti-smell bags and all of those bags go into the ursac. The ursac is supposed to be bear proof. It looks like it's made out of Kevlar. All you gotta do is strap it to a tree don't think a bear is going to be able to smell anything in that bag, but if he does, I'd rather him attack the bag and not me in my tent. Once the bag's strapped, it's time for bed. And that's basically it. Good morning, friends and family. Today is day 17 on the Colorado Trail, and today is just a quick three and a half mile walk into the uh, Monarch RV Resort. It's a beautiful day. Weather is wonderful in the mornings. It's a little chill in the air, but you can tell it's gonna be a warm sunny day again. All right, <laughs> uh, day 17, let's go. I guess this is Highway 50. There is no shoulder here. Cars are flying by. Everybody, check it out. I am uh, getting a ride from April. Her and her husband Scott own the Monarch Spur RV Resort where I mailed a resupply box to and I decided to go ahead and stay the day with them. I rented a tent site and April, bless her sweetheart, is driving me into town. I actually heard this is a hard place to get a hitch from and I was planning on just hitchhiking there and back but she graciously offered to give me a ride so I'm gonna go into town all I'm doing is eating and drinking and being merry and uh, and then I'll come back and, uh, and finish my uh, relaxation at the uh, at the park bro how long have you guys owned this place we just bought it back in November of 22 or I can imagine it's a lot of work taking over something like that yeah it's been a lot of work but it's what we wanted to do we wanted to be outside and doing physical work and it's been that <laughs> for sure and you have a son Maxton Yep, we have three daughters and a son. Whoa. Maxton's the youngest. So it's kind of a family business. Awesome. Our oldest just graduated, so she's kind of doing her own thing. But the other three all help out. Great. Some more than others? Some more than <laughs> others or some days more than others. <laughs> gotcha. Cool. Well, I sure appreciate the ride. Thank yeah, you. Thank absolutely. you so much. Right. 
about four o'clock in the afternoon and I just got back. The owners picked me up at the pub, which is awesome because obviously I'm not driving. These guys are so nice and so friendly. I've met their family. We've had pizza together. <laughs> It's been a wonderful time. Just want to give a quick shout out to Scott and April and their son, Max. Great meeting you guys. This has been a really fun part of my trip. So thanks for everything. Mm -hmm.